I'm not arguing there and you put him next to a medium format negative that's scanned in any kind of normal way, the, the competition is there. And honestly, I think the GFX might even beat some of those high resolution uh, film negatives. YouTube, what's good? Welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a minute, but I've been traveling a bunch. I've also been shooting a ton. So that's been keeping me real busy away from YouTube, but I'm happy to be back with some more videos. Today, we're actually gonna talk about film versus digital, specifically looking at the Fuji GFX cameras and of course, all the other equivalent medium format cameras that I use. I recently borrowed a GFX camera from PhotoCare here in New York City. You've seen them on the channel before. Really good friends of mine and they're supporting this channel by allowing me to borrow some gear. So shout out to them. Information about them down below. Definitely go check them out if you're in New York City. They've got everything you can imagine, both digital and film. So go rent from them. Anyway, so in this video, I basically did a shoot. I did a couple different shoots, but I did specifically a portrait shoot. And I brought the GFX with me and I brought some film cameras as well. And my goal originally was to do a very kind of clear pound for pound comparison, but that's not at all what happened. Ultimately, the experience of shooting the cameras was so different that it actually hurt me a little bit while shooting because I was trying to switch back and forth between the two. Before I dive into this too much, let's actually watch this quick little clip here from the shoot. I was photographing a friend of mine that came all the way from Puerto Rico. So shout out to her. And we're gonna look at all the different images I created on digital, uh, with the Hasselblad, and then also with the Polaroid camera that I have that shoots Instax. want to give you a quick heads up. We're closing shop on New Classic Film. And because of that, we're running a huge sale here. We're gonna be selling film to you at cost. Therefore, this is the lowest price you're gonna find for basically any fresh black and white film out there. Click the link down below and go cop yourself a pack. We're moving these fast and we're trying to get rid of them. All right, y'all, back to the video. So we're gonna talk about a couple things here that are very clear to me um, in terms of the differences between the two and ultimately why no matter what digital camera comes out, and I say that now based on things that have come out, but no matter what digital camera comes out, I'm a film guy and I'm gonna keep spending money on film, using film cameras, and predominantly shooting only on film cameras. So first and foremost, something that I wasn't super clear on, but I am now on, is that the sensor on the GFX cameras is not that big. Um, it's actually not that much bigger than shooting on a full frame digital camera. I don't have the percentage handy right now, but ultimately when you compare the two, the difference isn't that dramatic and that's a bit annoying. Um, honestly, I think if you're gonna spend all this money on a medium format digital camera, um, you would expect it to be a little bit bigger, um, especially because you wanna get the value out of the lenses that go with those cameras. And I think that's the ultimate kind of thing here that isn't that um, amazing to me. Um, when you shoot a medium format film camera, the lenses are designed to cover an image circle around the size of that negative size, whether it's 645, 66, or 67. Um, the sensor on a medium format digital camera does not compare that well to a 645 negative, for example. It's definitely smaller. Um, therefore, the lenses that you use for the GFX camera are not designed to cover an image circle that's equivalent to what you would have on a medium format film camera. And therefore, you're not going to get those same beautiful properties of the lenses that go on a medium format film camera because those lenses cover a bigger image circle and therefore you get those really interesting kind of qualities, especially when you shoot wide open. Specifically, when you shoot completely wide open on the lens, um, you get that beautiful kind of environmental bokeh that is signature of medium format cameras as compared to a 35 millimeter camera. If you want something that closely resembles 645 on digital, you're gonna have to spend crazy money. And I'm talking phase one cameras or some of the super high-end Hasselblad digital cameras. Yes, you can take a film lens and apply it to your GFX and there you'll be able to get the qualities of that lens, but still it's gonna be a cropped image compared to if you had shot it on film. So sensor size versus film negative, there's no comparison there. And the effects that that has on your images in terms of how they look, specific to the lenses you're using, that's gonna be apparent. 
There's other things though that I think are worthwhile with these uh, medium format digital cameras. Um, I think specifically one thing that was very useful was autofocus. And I forgot what autofocus was like because I've been shooting so much on my Hasselblad and on other film cameras and autofocus is slow. Sometimes it's annoying. Sometimes you can't see depending on how much light there is. That can be a big challenge. So cameras like the GFX, um, they do that for you. They do it really well. And I did have a good time shooting with the GFX because of that because I could just move my camera anywhere. I can move myself. Didn't have to worry about focusing at all. I just knew that the phase detection on the camera would handle that. On a film camera, especially on a Hasselblad, for example, where especially if you have the over, or if you have the waist level viewfinder, um, depending on the angle that you're shooting from, autofocus can be a bit challenging because your physical position with your body is gonna be altered by that. And you're gonna have to be able to look through the waist level viewfinder. So all of that gets a bit challenging. And therefore, you know, the GFX really, really kills when it comes to that. And some people are purists. Some people want nothing to do with autofocus. I totally respect that, but I'd be lying to you if I said that for me, that autofocus wasn't awesome to use. Um, other things I wanna talk about here have to do with the actual experience of using the cameras. The GFX has all these electronic controls and all these settings. Honestly, I think that's the problem with digital cameras nowadays is there's too many settings for everything. And the majority of those settings aren't that useful for 90% of the people that use these cameras. So I know you have to build it for everybody as opposed to just the 90%, but these settings become annoying. So for example, exposure compensation. When I shoot on a digital camera, I like using exposure comp. I pick aperture priority so that the camera starts to kind of do the exposure for me. And then based on how the scene looks, especially if you're backlit versus front lit, I use exposure comp to make up for that distinction. Um, Cause sometimes these cameras get confused and don't know what to do. And that's exactly what happened here. Look at these digital shots. Look at how overexposed these are. And I just let the camera do what it needed to do at the zero base exposure. And it was overexposing it time and time and time again. It couldn't handle the harsh sunlight. And I just don't understand why. And the worst part was I was trying to exposure comp because I noticed that it was having an issue doing the exposure and I couldn't figure out how to set exposure compensation. So that was extremely frustrating. And then I went into the menu, started digging around and I couldn't figure it out. So during my shoot, eventually I just switched to full manual so that I can control everything. And of course, a lot of people are like, oh, shoot full manual, you're a real photographer. People who use auto mode, they aren't. That's crap, I don't believe that at all. If you're using full manual always, you're wasting a lot of your time and effort because the explosion compensation plus one of those priority modes, that is where it's at. But of course, you need to figure out how to set exposure comp active on your camera. If I was shooting on my Hasselblad, which I did in the same shoot, exposure compensation is irrelevant. I just meter, put my settings in there, and boom. And my exposures were good. I don't think I messed any up, especially because I am very particular when I meter, um, especially when there's strong light hitting the subject. I use my Sekonic meter with the little bulb, um, and I just put it right on the highlight part of their face. And I typically measure for the highlights, unless it's a very dark scene, where I'll measure for the shadows. So all of these digital settings, I just wish camera makers would stop putting so many settings in these cameras because it does get confusing. And for people like me who aren't shooting that much on digital cameras nowadays, it can be a bit frustrating, especially going back and forth between digital and film in the same shoot. Look at how far I can zoom into this image. And this is a JPEG. Remember, I messed up and shot everything in JPEG. I don't even think it was the maximum file size JPEG. So these are nuts. And I think for modern digital cameras, I can see why people really like using these high megapixel cameras. If you think you're gonna replicate medium format though, at least in terms of the look and in terms of the actual size of image that you create uh, from the lens, it's not gonna happen. I already explained that earlier. And that's just a limitation currently because the sensor is not big enough and the lenses are designed to kind of cover that sensor and not go that much bigger. So that's a limitation. But when you talk about raw detail and kind of data, I'm not arguing there. The files you get from a GFX and from other medium format digital cameras are sufficient. And you put them next to a medium format negative that's scanned in any kind of normal way, even high resolution scans, the, the competition is there. And honestly, I think the GFX might even beat some of those high resolution uh, film negatives. Of course, you can drum scan and get real crazy, but who's drum scamming who's drum scanning all of their images on a roll of film? Nobody, because a drum scan image is at least $50, if not even more. So, you know, big ups to the GFX cameras. They're amazing. If you own one, I'm kind of jealous, but next time I borrow one, I'm gonna have to go into the menus and watch a few videos and ask some questions from some friends 
and get this camera set up the right way as to how I like it because without that, it's just gonna be super, super frustrating. All right, so that's the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please click like below. And of course, comment down below and let me know what are your thoughts on the GFX and on medium format digital cameras in general? Are they worth it or are they too expensive? All right, y'all, to the next video. I'm out.